All right. Our last piece is overall comparing and analyzing graphs. Okay. So by now, but prior to um, pre-cal, you should be able to analyze the graph, telling me points of increase, decrease, intercepts, when it's above or below the x-axis and things like that. Shh. Oh, he's helping. You just got to do it a little quieter. All right. So we have this graph. Boom. And then first thing we're going to do is be able to state the domain of any graph. There are two graphs happening here. We have f of x with some little curvatures in the beginning. We have g of x. Okay. Um, these are, anyone know what type of graphs these are called? Chaos. No. They're called piecewise. What? Piecewise. These are piecewise graphs. Like well, piecewise. Oh, yeah. Like the in the mm -hmm. Exactly. Your graphs are made of different functions along the path. Does that make sense? So as you can see here, this one starts off as a quadratic, then becomes a constant that ends as a linear. We have an increasing linear, a, a not as much increasing, then we have a decreasing linear, and then another increasing linear, right? These are piecewise graphs okay we're going to establish the domain of each piece so of each function so if we look at f of x what is the domain of f of x it, it's all real numbers right yeah. yep so you can either be lazy and write that or you can do the whole negative infinity to positive infinity <laughs> no. i'm good okay what about g of x mm -hmm. same thing they both go forever to the left and forever to the right, right. Agree? All right. We can do domain, correct? Yes. Woohoo! Oh, look at this. Okay. The next thing we're going to analyze are the values. When it says f of x equals zero, what does that mean you're looking for? Y. When your y is in your y is zero, so you're looking for your x intercepts. Okay. Anytime a thing says f of x equals zero, that means you're looking for x intercepts. Okay. So for the function f of x, where are my x-intercepts? Two and does it? We, okay, let's see. So we have x equals negative four, x equals two. Now this last one, you're going to have to, you would have to use a little bit of your knowledge of linear equations to figure out where it's going to hit. So if I look at this graph, it has, it's a line that is going. So this is a linear equation. It has a slope of one, two. I went down two and one, two, over three. So it has a slope of negative two thirds. Agree? So if this negative two thirds was to continue, my goal would be able to figure out where it would end up going, right? Mm -hmm. I can count it out or I can use my linear equation and figure it out. I'm just going to do it to save us time. And we're going to end up at x equals 15. There we go. Huh? Because the arrow tells us that it goes on forever. It keeps going down. So it keeps going down. So that it, this is going to have to cross the x-axis at least one more time. Okay. Whereas g of x, the x-intercepts are just what you see, right? Yeah. Because the arrows no longer are going to cross our x-axis. So we're at two, four. No, I didn't mean it. Five, I didn't mean five. And seven. I totally missed the whole point. Yes, you <laughs> So you could either keep counting out your slope, going down two and over three, down two and over three, or you could actually find the equation of the line and plug it in. So you have a couple options on counting or algebraically calculating. We'll see it. So we have x equals negative 2, x equals 5, and x equals 7. Okay? How do we feel about identifying when it says f of x equals, or a function equals 0? Good. Good? We all understand that means we're looking for the what? The x-intercept. Okay? All right. Other symbols that you should be comfortable with. Um, do you guys have the graph? So I'm going to rely on you to be my graphers. Okay? Because I do I have my graph anymore? Yeah. I do not, okay? So here it says the value of X so that F of X equals G of X. I'm now looking for their points of intersection. So I, this is asking you, where do they intersect? So at X, what X values at X equals what do they intersect? Negative three, good job. 
Where else do they intersect? X equals three and X equals nine. Do we agree with her or disagree with her? You didn't even look. I know. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I, agree. I can go back. I, no, miss. Right here. All right. So okay. we intersect at x equals negative three. We intersect here at x equals positive three. And we intersect here when x equals nine. Yes? All right. Next, it says here when you see this situation, the value of x such that f of x is greater than g of x. This is asking you when is the graph of f of x above the graph of g of x, okay? Greater than is I'm asking when is this function above this function? So when is f of x above g of x? So let's go look. So they're going to be intervals, exactly. So when is this guy above? When f of x, f of x is where, when is f of x above? We're not above, oh, well, right here. Oh yes, negative, negative infinity to negative three. This is below, where are we above again? We start until nine. So those are our intervals where we are above. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you write them as intervals. So I'm gonna go back to my little thing and write out my intervals. So we said from negative infinity to negative three and, and three to nine is where it stopped. Wait. Do I need to go back? Wait, no, no. Yes. No, because the points, if it, you would put a bracket in a good question if it said equal underneath. But because it doesn't say equal, we don't need a bracket. Okay, so if, if the greater than means above, what does the less than mean? Under. under. When are we under, right? Or below. So when is f of x under g of x? So we go back and look at our graph. Technically, yes. So we have negative 3, 2 to 3 right here, right? And then we are nine to infinity and beyond. Agree? Yes? I'm um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and nine to infinity. All right. Anytime it says, when is g of x greater than zero? This is when are you asking above the x-axis? So when is g of x above the x-axis? Perfect. 30, 30, 30. That's what that means. So anytime it says, yes. You brackets, there you go. We use the bracket as soon as they throw in that equal. Our parentheses become a bracket. Okay, we get our lines from the from the equal sign. Okay, so if um, greater than zero means above the x-axis, what does less than zero mean? Below. So now we're looking when is f of x below the x-axis? There we go. Negative four to positive two. From five to seven. Okay, so you notice how I've been writing and. When I get lazy and I want to write and anymore, that's where that you can come into play. If you don't want to keep writing word and, guess what you can lazily do? You. 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 Did, she, did she not say 15? I heard 15 because I thought that it's. Uh, and also remember, we have an X intercept at 15. So even though we don't see it, 15 happens and then we continue. It's negative four to two, and then 15 to infinity. Because that will be our next x-intercept. Yes. All right, so um, really quick before you leave, I think we are just going through the vocabulary and making sure we understand. Your homeworks aren't due till Tuesday and Wednesday.